Finally, everybody, we have some good news about the social security benefits and the unemployment benefits. So you want to be sure to stand to the end of this video to find out more information on this. When will another stimulus relief payment be sent out? Everybody, we all know that we have received about three stimulus checks so far. But still, many households have fallen behind on payments. Financial insecurity is still widespread. And the loss of a job and the loss of hours have been some of the main reasons why Americans are still suffering financially. About 9% of American adults have reported a shortage of food in their household over the previous week. And an additional 15% of renters have fallen behind on their rent. The federal eviction moratorium has been extended until October 3rd. But this doesn't forgive rent that is owed. So many people are about to be evicted, everybody. This means that many people will be going homeless. Employment also remains below the pre-crisis levels. About 5.3 million fewer workers are on payrolls than before the pandemic. The unemployment rate fell to about 5.2% in August, but job growth slowed dramatically. And all these are simple facts that prove that more stimulus relief is definitely needed. And the good news is that we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in Congress. Representative Ocasio-Cortez is pushing Congress to extend the unemployment benefits. She has just introduced a bill to extend the PUA benefits. And this comes as an estimated 7.5 million unemployed workers lost all their benefits in September. And that's when key unemployment programs ended. Everybody, approximately 4.2 million workers lost the pandemic unemployment assistance program benefits. And that was for workers who usually don't qualify for regular unemployment insurance. Around 4 million workers lost some or all the benefits in June and July. So if Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez can get this bill approved, it would definitely help out many Americans. If you guys agree, then be sure to like this video. And now for the social security payments. Just know this everybody, the social safety net will require congressional action to survive beyond this point. Estimates indicate that benefits for new retirees at this current point in time would need to be reduced by 25 to 50% in order for our seniors to receive more social security payments. But listen here, Bernie Sanders says the Democrats are now weighing for a $1,000 voucher for seniors to purchase new Medicare benefits. Senator Bernie Sanders said that the Senate Democrats were considering $1,000 vouchers for seniors to access expanded Medicare benefits. And this could form a major part of his $3.5 trillion social spending plan. Bernie Sanders said it would serve as a brief stopgap. While the programs are implemented, Senate Democrats are seeking to expand Medicare so it covers dental, vision, and hearing benefits. This winds the reach of their federal health insurance program, which is a top priority for Bernie Sanders. House Democrats have introduced legislation for Medicare to gradually initiate vision coverage next year. But Sanders says that he favors a faster timeline than the original five years. Everybody, for more detail on this, just know that the measure emphasizes the challenge that Democrats face as they attempt to provide tangible benefits to Americans in a social spending package, also known as the infrastructure bill. But still, experts say it could take years for Medicare to design and implement new programs. In addition, the number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits has moved up late last week to around 332,000. Applications for unemployment assistance have risen about 312,000 from the week before. Many people, everybody, are calling for more unemployment benefits to be provided, to be sent out. Do you approve of this, everybody? Tell me in the comments below. Many people said it was long overdue. That the end of payments comes after an abysmal job support, with just 235,000 new jobs added to the economy. Of the current unemployment claims in the last week, at least 4,000 were from Louisiana, where Hurricane Ida has led to widespread job losses in the state. The job market in the broader economy has slowed down in recent weeks, so everybody, it's looking that more, it's looking like more and more stimulus relief is definitely necessary. Early this month, a report from the Social Security trustees that the depletion of the trust funds, both retirement and disability was a year earlier than previously expected. Subscribe everybody to my channel for more information on stimulus checks, unemployment benefits, and of course, a social security boost. Now, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Providing for the common defense, protecting the American people, it's one of the fundamental responsibilities our founders entrusted to the federal government. It's a core obligation of the commander in chief. Yet to a deadly degree, a parade of mistakes in Afghanistan tells us President Biden and his team have failed this most basic test of competence. For 20 years, the United States has successfully kept terrorists from staging another major attack on our homeland. Over the years, we've reduced our own military presence in Afghanistan, secured greater assistance from foreign partners, and supported local Afghan forces who did the vast majority of the fighting. This strategy kept Al-Qaeda on the run 
It kept the Taliban from taking control, and it kept Afghanistan from becoming a safe haven for terror. In only a matter of months, President Biden and his team have squandered all of that, squandered it. The collapse we've witnessed wasn't inevitable. It didn't happen on its own. It happened because President Biden pulled the plug on our Afghan partners and pulled the plug, pulled the rug out from under our allies who were with us in this shared fight. Everyone seems to realize this is a historic disaster for the United States, except maybe the president and his loyal retainers. Secretary Blinken points to the frantic evacuation of 100,000 desperate people as a huge success. Seriously? They initially didn't envision having to evacuate anyone. The number of people evacuated is not a metric of success for this administration. It's a measure of their failure. Back in April, my colleague, the Democratic leader, he praised on what he called President Biden's, quote, careful and thought out plan with a real timetable and a firm end date, end quote. Does he stand by this lavish praise for a careful and thought out plan? Crickets. Was it wise to conduct our retreat during the height of the fighting season? Was it sound strategy to preemptively abandon the strategic Bagram Air Base in the middle of the night without telling our partners? Was it careful and prudent to tie our departure to the 20th anniversary of September the 11th? Our botched retreat from a so-called endless war cost more American lives than nearly the prior two years combined. And make no mistake, the war against terror hasn't ended. Far, far from it. In a rare moment of candor, the Biden administration's own experts have admitted explicitly that we will face new terrorist threats from inside Afghanistan sooner rather than later. We'll have to face a more entrenched and emboldened enemy with fewer resources, fewer friends, and more constraints. So, Mr. President, virtually every reason and advantage that President Biden said this policy would bring about has already proven absolutely false. <coughs> the administration said leaving Afghanistan would let us focus more resources on China. But its catastrophic retreat has tied up even more resources, including strategic naval assets from the Indo-Pacific. And while the administration's officials are consumed, consumed with this catastrophe,